Uh, you want to you want to do the inside. Yeah, it's going to make your sock a little bit gross for a while, but um, you know, so what? So do the inside too, because that's what you want to. You want a good antibacterial type of product to, to that will get in there and stop that foot funk you got. You know, and you're and you're getting the leather from both sides this way, and do the bottoms, and you know this will work down into the shank and and all of that, and just keep that nice and soft and sup supple. If you don't take care of you, your boots, you'll know they just get harder and harder and more uncomfortable, especially in the front right there. But there's no reason why a boot can't remain soft and supple as it, as it was when it was new if it's kept clean and it's taken care of. All right? So, there, there we go. That's that's pretty much the process. Now, while that's sitting there, you know, we'll we'll want to do our false tongue as well. You know, hit that both sides. Get that in there, you know. Now get that really coated up. It's kind of like a, a time release there, as you know, kind of store some of that protected in there. And I hit my laces. What I'll typically do with the laces, I don't want my laces oversaturated because they get soft and they get it makes them kind of um, it weakens them if they get too oily, too much treatment on them. So I'll, I'll just what's left the residual left on my hands. I'll typically take my laces, and again the only good leather laces that I've ever been able to find are from the White's Boot Company. So go go to White's Boots um, up in Spokane, Washington, and they'll send you uh, proper leather laces that are that will actually last some time. Um, the, if you want, there's some even, there's some synthetic laces out there by Obanoffs that I've, I've got on my White's Boots that are even better better than leather. Um, Obanoff sent me two pair. I've got one pair that I've used and I've given one to a friend and he likes them. Uh, and I I like mine too. They, I I've been wearing them a lot. So, oh, I don't know what six months, maybe cl maybe close. Yeah, probably six months. And they have not broke, and they don't show any signs of breaking. So I think actually the synthetic laces are. I think they're better. Uh, they 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 pull tighter when you lace them. They they slip better through the eyelets, through these brass eyelets, and all that leather does. But you know, there's something there's something about leather laces and the tradition of it. That I, I'm nostalgic about it, and I, and I I enjoy them. One thing, uh, if you guys that are in, getting into wildland firefighting, a lot of you young guys have been contacting me and want to know how to get in to wildland firefighting. How do you how do you get started? Well, there's there's really two two main ways. Um, you can get on. Actually, there's. There's three ways. You can, uh, if you live in a rural area, you can volunteer with your local fire department. And most of the time, well, in this area anyway, rural fire departments are heavily trained in wildland firefighting because it's part of life. It's definitely part of life out here. So we cross-train structural and wildland firefighting. Uh, the other is you can get a job, seasonal job, with the Forest Service. So you have to go online, you know, forestservice.gov or whatever it is, and and th that's a that's a tough tougher way to get in. But there's lots of different things you could do. You know, you could go into the hot shots or attempt to. You could ultimately, if you want, you were really driven and a focused individual, you could become a smoke jumper. You know, those are all federal jobs. And the third, and the, probably the easiest and e the most guaranteed way, would be to go uh, to get a job with a private contractor. So just like the military, heavily using private contractors, and uh, that, that goes for um, wildland firefighting. And Lord willing, I'll be going out on an engine uh, with a private contractor this summer. So um, as I alluded to in Mrs. Wrangler Star's video, I will be hopefully uh, on fires this year. Uh, you can get a job of that uh, as a, on a hand crew, um, but typically, you know, you need to really plan that in advance. You need to have all your training done. So if you want to work for the fire season next year, you would want to be contacting private companies, contracting companies uh, about future employment. Now is going to be too late. You're not going to get the training in. A lot of the training you can do online, but the companies will always pay for it. So you won't be anything out of pocket and you can do it. So you just have to kind of look into it. So there you have it. Uh, just from the time it took to put the laces in on the Adams boots, you can see 
that it's really taking um, that that treatment nice. You know, we kind of had it was all white there and messy looking, but it's um, it's it's going in nice. I pay special attention in here to these areas with with my treatment, whether it be open offs. Even I even go so far as to I like to melt whatever I have and drip it in there and press that in there with my feet because that is the, where the stitching is. And that is where water gets kind of uh, ingresses or is, is, you know, these boots aren't waterproof. Anyone who says they have a, make a waterproof boot that's not, that's leather, um, you know, it's expect, don't expect a lot. I know Danner has their boots with their Gore-Tex booty, which I detest. I wore them for years, so. Don't tell me how great they are. I know exactly what they are. Um, it, they're, they're, it's just not, not possible. You got a leather boot here. But if you waterproof all these and keep a good protectant, Obanoffs, Adams, you know, I don't, whatever, whatever you like, snow seal, uh, you can minimize that. So if you cross a creek or step through a creek, you know, I'm not saying you can stand in water. You're not going to go fly fishing in these things and have nice, dry, cool, warm feet. Uh, but if you need to cross a stream or you're in and out really quick, you know, you're not going to get wet feet um, if you seal all this stuff up. You know, seal all these joints and 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 keep it applied, and it, it'll it'll serve you. So that's it. I'm not going to bore you with the second boot. We'll do open offs on it. And remember, we have to come back and remember the left boot was Adams and the right boot will be open us. We'll see you guys in the next video. I can't believe it. 20 minutes of boot care videos. So I promised a riddle and Jack has a riddle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Say my name and I disappear. What am I? That is this week's riddle. So if you can figure that out, and that's a tough one. Say my name and I disappear. Uh, put it in the comments. We'll see who, who is the smarty. If you enjoyed this video series and, and would like to uh, see, well, I know you enjoyed it because you're still here, right? Mm -hmm. Click the thumbs up, please. We appreciate it. It helps us. So Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. And put one of our favorites right over there. question we asked was, was Charles Ingalls the perfect father? What do you think? Yeah. They just make it look like he's perfect. That's right. he's not even. It's Hollywood magic, isn't it? See you guys later. Was it me, Holly? Probably. <laughs>